Okay. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the November 13th meeting of the St. Mary's County Planning Commission. There are two sign-up sheets in the foyer for our hearing this evening. One is a sign-up sheet if you are speaking for any, either one of the cases. The other is a sign-up sheet for attendees uh, of this hearing. In case any further information needs to be sent to you regarding the cases, please sign in on these sheets. Our meeting is being recorded for the public record. Any comments made by anyone must anyone present must be recorded as part of the record. <coughs> Therefore, if you have anything to say, you must come up to one of the microphones provided. Your comments cannot be recorded and placed in the record unless they are directed to a microphone. You are to direct your statements, questions, or responses to the board only, and we will direct them to the appropriate person for an answer. Please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone testifying or asking questions during our public hearings will be required to take an oath. And I ask you to, when you come up, please speak into the microphone and please silence your cell phones at this time. Thank you for your cooperation. On our agenda this evening, after a review and approval of the minutes from last week, uh, we have one discussion item, and that is for our Planning Commission and TEC Committee meeting schedules, <coughs> following by our first public hearing, which is CSP 23-0178 for the Compass Point Montessori <laughs> Daycare. The owner is uh, Mr. Kyle Bakke, uh, Compass Point Montessori. Uh, their agent is Soltez, and their action required this evening is a review of a concept site plan for, for converting a dwelling into 2,238 square foot daycare. Following that, our second one will be concept site plan number CSP 23-0152 for the Patuxen River Village Center. Uh, the owner is the Lexington Park, Lexington Park Shopping Center, LLC. And the action requested this evening is a review of a concept site plan for 6,100 square feet of restaurant, fast food, 19,432 square feet of retail sales general, and 3,500 square feet of retail sales limited, and 1,300 square feet of takeout food and beverage sales. Following by adjournment. At this time, I'll let the board members introduce themselves, starting on the left. John Brown. Kim Summers. Patty Robrick. Howard Thompson. Or Joe Van Kirk. Joe Fazekas. Merle Evans. Okay, also with us this evening, <coughs> from county staff, our director of Department of Land Use and Growth Management, Jessica Andritz, uh, her planner, Brandy Glenn, uh, her planner three, Sean Lee Blasco, and the Senior Administrative Coordinator, and welcome back, Jessica Birch. Also with us um, in county staff, we have our Assistant County Attorney, Mr. John Hauser. Uh, from the Department of Public Works and Transportation, we have their Deputy Director, Donnie Mills. Uh, from St. Mary's County, or from St. Mary's Metropolitan Commission, Anna Wells. From the Patuxent River NAS Community Planning Liaison Office, Mr. Alec Young. Our video media producer is Amy Carter. And from the Department of Economic Development, we have their Deputy Director, Kelly Hinkle, and their Direct Development Facilitator, Ben Cohen. Anybody I miss? Okay, that's good. Moving right along, we have a set of minutes from the November 6th meeting. Did everybody have a chance to review those? Point, I don't, it has, it has listed that I abstained from that vote, and I don't think I abstained from that vote. I think I'm the one that abstained because I wasn't here. Abstained, right. Yes. Okay. FYI. Can we get that corrected, please? Any others? Can I have a motion to include that correction, please? So moved. I have a I'll second. I have a motion by Mr. Van uh, Evans, second by Mr. Brown. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Staying. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Pazikas. Okay. Moving right along. Our first case this evening. Our first discussion item this evening is uh, we've gotten, we've received our uh, schedules for next year for the Planning Commission and for the TEC 
meetings. Did everybody have a chance to review those? Any questions? Can I have a motion to accept those dates? So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Evans. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Ms. Robrecht. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Do you wish it all went like that? I was going to say that'll be the easiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> the next two ought to be as yeah. easy, right? <laughs> now we get down to the good stuff. <clears throat> all right, our first hearing this evening. Oh, my screen disappeared. It's for the uh, Compass Point Montessori Daycare Concept Site Plan. Um, anybody that's going to be testifying during that hearing or asking questions and all, if I could swear everybody in at this time. And if you do come up I, and I don't recognize you, I, tr I try to count. Um, I'll ask you if you've been sworn in. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. Okay. Sean Lee, go ahead. Good evening. Um, the agenda item two is a concept site plan, CSP 23 0178 for Compass Point Montessori Daycare. The concept site plan seeks approval for a change of use from a single family dwelling, use number 15, to a daycare, non-medical, use number 28. The site is located in uh, Maryland Route 5, Point Lookout Road in Lanatown. The land, land use is rural preservation. The zoning is RPD, Rural Pro Preservation District. Per the cons comprehensive plan, use type 28, daycare, non-medical, is a facility licensed or approved by the governmental agency to provide non-medical care for nine or more children or adults on less than 24-hour basis includes nursery schools, preschools, and social adult daycare that provides a safe and supervised daytime program of meals, recreational activities, and socialization for adults 18 years or over who require a safe controlled environment but who do not meet the need for health care services required by the medical adult daycare service. The public notice for the Planning Commission public hearing was published in Southern Maryland News on October 27th and November 3rd. <coughs> the property has been posted in accordance with the CCO requirements, Section 21.3.3. Certified mail rece receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit Number 1. The agenda was posted on the website on November 7th. The concept site plan was distributed for review by the TEC agencies on May 12, 2023. The use of daycare non-medical number 28 is permitted in the <coughs> permitted use in the rural preservation zoning district. For all non-residential and multi-family residential projects that require major site plan approval, a concept site plan shall first be approved by the Planning Commission before the major site plan may be processed for approval by Planning Director. This is a public hearing that enables all who wish to provide information to the Planning Commission. In order to approve the concept site plan, the Planning Commission shall make the findings that the proposed development is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans, may be served by adequate public facilities as required by section 70.2.2, will promote the health, 
safety, and welfare of the general public. Adequately developed recreational and other community amenities are provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive zoning ordinance. It's consistent with chapter 62 design objectives. There is one outstanding issue. The applicant must obtain an approval from planning commission to reduce the required B buffer yard. This concludes the, the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 2. Greg Hosendor from Soltes is here to representing the applicant. Is there any question for me? Is there any questions of staff at this time? Okay, thank you. Okay, would the applicant like to come up? Yes, sir, that's fine. Good evening, everyone. Um, Could you just, give us your name and business address, please? Okay, um, I'm Greg Hosendorf from Soltes. Um, my address is 401 Post Office Road, Suite 103, Waldorf, Maryland, um, zip code 20602. Um, basically, didn't want to regurgitate anything that... Um, staff already presented, but if you guys had any questions concerning the site, um, I'll gladly answer those questions for you. I don't have any questions about the site necessarily. Okay. Um, I have a, a question probably of the applicant about what they Just plan the to operations. do. the operations. Right, the operation part of it, you know, so maybe that may not be for you. But okay. I don't have any site issues. Um, well, my client, uh, Kyle Baki, he is here. If you would like to ask him any questions, I can have him come up. And I'll slide. That's something we don't get very often uh -oh. in here. No, we don't. Got, got right. a little family <laughs> atmosphere this evening. Breaks me not any little. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, then, could you give us your name and, and business address, please? Yep, Kyle Baki, uh, the business address 22615 Point Lookout Road, Leonardtown, Maryland, 20650. And my wife, who actually runs this, the, uh, the program. The program. <laughs> I'm Tiffany Baki, same address. Do you need me to list it? <laughs> okay. And I did get to swear you both in. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Not very complicated. <laughs> so. Although I was, I was a bit confused. When I looked at it, I thought the name Compass Point Montessori, and then I visited the site, mm -hmm. and it says it's going to be a daycare. Mm -hmm. My girls went through Montessori. Yes, sir. Which was terrific for them and for us. So is this a Montessori with, because when, I, when my kids went, we referred to it as a Montessori school. Um, is this a Montessori, and are you connected with the Montessori process with an attached daycare? Is that what you're doing? Is that, is that how you're going to operate? I'm a bit confused. No. So we fall under the Maryland State Department of Education um, daycare licensing. So it's really an age group. But my wife, who can talk to the actual program itself, we run it as a Montessori program. So it's a very, I'll let her explain. So the way Montessori programs are set up, are they, th they are three year age groupings. Right. And so you have infant to three years old, three years old to six years old, six years old to nine years old, nine years old to 12 years old. And I am running an early childhood program, which is the three to six year old program. Mm -hmm. I do not have the lower elementary or upper elementary. I am just the three to six year olds, which puts me in the um, State Department, the education license of a daycare preschool nursery school setting. Okay. So for the purposes, for, the, for, my, for my purposes then, mm -hmm. you are not in fact certified under the Montessori system? No, I am a trained Montessori. Oh. I have a credentialed um, Montessori license from the American Montessori Society. And once we move to the new location, I will actually have the paperwork in place to be a member 
a, a member program of the American Montessori Society. Right, because here's the thing. It's a very fine line. It's a fine line between the application with regard to a daycare and right. the application regarding a school. Correct. Two different things. And I just want to make sure it's better for me to make sure tonight than it is for you to get in this process and find out this is not going to work out very well for you folks. So as long as you've made application, because right, made application as a daycare, then we're, we're good? Yeah, we're in very close contact with our representative from the Maryland State Department of Ed. Okay. And the, it's basically our current license is right. a daycare license, and we operate as a family daycare license. When we shift, it'll be a, a center, daycare center license. It's, it's based on the number of people and the fact that we don't live in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so the license is essentially the same, just a different location with yeah. larger, more, larger scope. A few more students. It allows me to have up to 17 students, but it's the same age group and it's not in my home. So I'm no longer a family right. home daycare. Yeah, and, and that's fine. And, and so I had a sister-in-law that owned a Montessori which is why I'm asking some of these questions, because Montessori is sort of like, it's all the same, but it's different. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have daycare here that do all these things. <clears throat> Montessori, where they go to the shelf and take what they need and they bring it back, and they, you know, it's more one-on-one, -on -one, I think, that way, I think. Right. I mean, it is, it is a Montessori program, but okay. we are operating as a daycare, as a daycare. preschool, program yeah. okay yeah the permit okay. that we just required for us is the daycare permit that's fine as long as long as you haven't considered doing this as a monastery school that will be at a later date in a much larger location well, I, well that was the <laughs> not other at point. this location <laughs> the other point i was going to make <laughs> is that this location is probably a tad on the small side right for doing those sorts of it things is. stepping stones okay that's fine a bit of time that's fine good thank you yes uh, Mr. and Mrs. Backey, is that how you pronounce Bakke, it? Yes. Backey, sorry. So have you reached out to your neighbors uh, on either side to... We have, yeah. The, uh, the five closest neighbors, we went knocking on doors a couple of weeks ago. We were able to talk to three out of the five neighbors, the three closest ones. Um, and <laughs> in fact, the, uh, the one neighbor that's closest to us and shares the border, he offered to bring his tractor over and help us plant trees and things. So, <laughs> um, And then the other neighbor with the horses, he offered to let us come over and see the horses. So we, they're very friendly and they're very, you know, there are no objections from our neighbors. That, that's good to hear because, yeah, I guess my biggest concern would be when anyone's asking to for a reduction in buffer, um, the question would be about the sound and, you know, would they be willing for that? And uh, <clears throat> As someone who's suffering from some hearing loss myself from too much rock music growing up, um, there's definitely a difference in in, in the low the bass sounds, uh, like like a car going down a gravel road or something, versus the frequency of, of children playing. Um, my new house we just bought, um, we live near a middle school, um, and I know when they're out of recess when I'm in the house, but I can't hear the UPS or the FedEx or the Amazon truck pull up to my own driveway because it's just a difference in frequencies. So as long as they're aware uh, and, and there's there are no uh, objections, and we'll find out a testimony if anyone shows up with objections, that would be my only concern with this project. So Yeah, we, we did ask them specifically about that, and all of them were like, yeah, no problem. We don't That's mind. That's good to hear. So, yeah. Yeah. And we also mitigated based on the, the the time that the children are outside. We yeah. also right, that. right. I understand that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I did. <clears throat> well, I go by there all the time. Um, with the hours that you have, uh, and the the sight lines of the road right there, you shouldn't really have any problem with people getting in and out. Um, even though the speed limit right there is the t top as it can go as it can go right there but uh, I think with your sight lines and all everything should be all right for getting in and out anything? yeah okay anybody else have anything uh once again what's what's your capacity plan capacity so the plan capacity is no more than 20 students it's going to be so we have to have a certain uh footprint per child and that's dictated to us by the state department of ed okay but 22 is them I'm sorry, say 22 is your number, you said? 20. 20. 20. Okay. No more than 20. Okay. Okay. Just one more comment, one more question. And uh, so the comment was just that this was very helpful, uh, not knowing the property myself, uh, to go out there and to see what it looks like from every corner. Uh, I wish more applicants would do that. 
and then just just more of a curiosity for myself the uh, the true grid that you're using t um, to reinforce the ground is that to minimize impervious surface or is that so it's it's twofold it is to reduce the impervious surface but also one of the main tenets of Montessori is one with nature right so we don't want to add additional concrete that we don't need to which is one of the reasons why I didn't really like the idea of a privacy fence. We wanted to make sure that we were able to maintain the, you know, the nature, the trees, and the, the sight lines throughout the property while mitigating it with, with trees, right, for the noise piece of it. So, so it's, I, it's twofold. And did you like look at the, the just for my future reference on, on committees, um, cost-wise, is it comparable? Is it more affordable than actually doing the full-scale you know, paving of, of? More asphalt? Yeah. I actually didn't. OK. So we went in with the intent of maintaining right. the, as much right. grass as we could. Very nice. Thank you. Seeing how there's no fence, um, I guess you'll have adequate um, employees there to keep all those little chaps herded in? Correct. Yes, okay. that's a requirement for the licensing of how many adults per children. So, yes. Okay. Anybody else have anything? No. All right. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to public testimony if... <clears throat> You have one one speaker, um, Mr. David Lewis. David Lewis. Did you want to speak on this? I wanted to speak to the site plan for the redevelopment. Oh, okay. You're just on the way. That's okay. We'll take care of you. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody want to come up? Me and my parents want to speak. <laughs> we do have some of our students well, here. crowd from the back is okay. They're, they're good with you. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public testimony. Um, any rebuttal from the applicant? They've just answered all our questions, so I don't think there's any, any problem with what we have. Um, is there any discussion from the board? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll do it. In the matter of concept site plan number CSP 23-0178, Compass Point Montessori Daycare, having accepted the staff report and having made a finding that the objectives of section 60.6 .6 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met, and noting that the reference project has met all the requirements for concept approval, I move that the concept site plan be approved with the following conditions. Any road improvements required by the state and county must be concurrent with the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a I'll second? second. I have a motion by Ms. Summer and a second by Mr. Brown. Um, all in favor of this motion, I think it's aye. pretty well good. Aye. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You already mentioned it. You've met with your neighbors. I always say, take care of your neighbors. Make sure everything stays good. And congratulations and good luck to you. Thank, Thank you, you very good much. Luck. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> Moving right along. Second public hearing uh, this evening is for uh, concept site plan CSP 23 0152 for the Pax River Village Center. Uh, owner is Lexington Park Shopping Center LLC, and you've already heard that all the action required. Um, John Lee, are you taking care of us on this one too? The next one is. Oh, before we start, let me go ahead and swear everybody in that's going to be testifying this evening. Comments? Raise your right hand, Mr. Mills. <laughs> Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Agenda item three is a concept site plan, CSP 23-0152 for Pax River Village Center. 
the concept site site plan uh, six approval for 6,100 square feet of uh, restaurant, fast food, 19,432 square feet of retail sales general, 3,500 square feet of retail sales limited, and 1,300 square feet of takeout food and beverage sales. The site is located on Maryland Ro Route 235, Shangri-La Drive, and FDR Boulevard. The land use, the land uses are limited commercial, industrial, mixed use medium intensity, and mi mixed use high intensity. The zonings are LCI, MXM, and MXH, and overlays zoning APZ2. Per the com comprehensive plan, S um, per the comprehensive plan, restaurant fast food use number seventy four, an establishment that offers quick eating or takeout food service, which is accomplished through a limited menu of items already prepared and held for service. Retail Sales General, use number 76. An establishment that engage in high volume retail sales of goods and merchandise not specifically listed under another use classification. Use type includes department stores, discount stores, retail warehouses, and shopping clubs. Use also includes any establishment listed under Retail Sales Limited that occupies gross floor area in excess of 20,000 square feet, except in the RCL. Retail Sales Limited, use number 77. Establishment engaged in low volume retail sales of goods and merchandise, not specifically listed under another use classification, including but not limited to Specialty stores engage in retail sale of antiques, appliances, art, art supplies, and services. Take out food and beverage sales. Use number 78. Establishment offering prepared food and beverages exclusively for off-site consumption. Includes delivery service, cat catering service, custom bakeries, and specialty shops. For an example, coffee shops and delicatessen. The public notice for this uh, Planning Commission public hearing was published in Southern Maryland News in October 27th and November 3rd. The property has been posted in accordance to CZO requirements, Section 21.3.3. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 1. <clears throat> the agenda was posted on the website on November 7th. The concept site plan was distributed for review by the TEC agencies on May 1st, 2023. The use of retail sales general and limited and the use of takeout food and beverage are permitted in LCI, MXM, and MXH and overlay zoning APZ2. The use of restaurant fast food is not permitted in zoning LCI and APZ2. For all non-residential and multifamily residential projects that require my, a major site plan approval, a concept site plan sh shall be first approved by the Planning Commission before the major site plan may may be processed for approval by the planning director. This is a public hearing which enables all who wish to provide information to the pl planning commission in order to approve the concept site plan. The planning commission shall make findings that the proposed development is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans may be served by adequate public facilities as required by section 70.2.2 will promote the health and safety and welfare of the general public adequately developed 
Recreational and other community amenities are provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive zoning ordinance. It's consistent with chapter 62 design objectives. There are one outstanding issue. The applicant must be must obtain approval for the to reduce the required B buffer yard. This concludes the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 2. Joe Kajeski from COA Barrett is here representing the applicant. Are there any questions for me? Does anybody have any questions to staff at this time? I, I have one question. In your report, you have Category 5 outstanding issues. Um, item C there. It says a zoning text amendment is required for everybody's benefit. Could you explain what that means? Can't the staff answer that? So it's in sworn testimony. It's an explanation of law. It's not the um. It's not something you need to have testimony under oath. Well, it's to not answer. in the comprehensive plan when you look for explanations. So how the zoning text amendment is work is currently the um, use is not allowed under LCI or the APZ. Say again, speak up louder into your mic. The use is not allowed under the current zoning, a comprehensive zoning ordinance. Correct. Um, in LPI or APZ2. Uh, April of 2022, the Department of the Navy issued new guidance for what sort of facilities that are acceptable in their determination or their recommendations in the APZ2. Uh, the proffered uses would be allowed, but our zoning, comprehensive zoning ordinance hasn't yet been updated to reflect that. So if there is an affirmative vote tonight, then going forward, before final approval could be given and the project could be going, we would have to amend the text amend or comprehensive zoning ordinance to reflect that. Uh, that process takes place before the county commissioners. It is optional. The county commissioners could seek a recommendation from the planning commission. It's not required. Uh, but they would ultimately be the final decision maker. There would have to be a public hearing and a process to be followed as well during that. But that's roughly how that process would work. Okay, so basically item C is an issue that the commissioners would be resolving. Correct. That your that's all I wanted right. really to get your, your approval tonight would have to be predicated on. It's basically a recommendation for that. That's a way to look at it, I suppose, that the commissioners should take that action. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Hauser, while you're, while you're up there, is this working? Hello? Hello? Okay. Um, so the, the U.S. government had one rule for the APZ2 prior, and then we uh, developed our zoning based upon those regulations. So now our existing zoning, um, so, so, so since our existing zoning has been adopted, they have updated or modified or relaxed what kinds of land uses were allowed there? Is that, is that a correct statement? Uh, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Zoning All a text right. amendment, I imagine, would just be to bring our comprehensive zoning ordinance to reflect current Navy I, guidance. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else of staff this time? Okay. Who's coming up for the applicant this evening? Good evening, Mr. Longmore. Good evening. Long time no see. Nice to see you. Mr. Gajeski. Glad That's to be back. About seven days ago. <laughs> Good evening, members of the Planning Commission. Chris Longmore uh, here representing the applicant this evening. Um, we're very happy to be in, in front of you to present this project. We think it's a, an exciting opportunity for the county and one that, that is probably overdue and one that we hope that, that you'll be excited about as well. Um, to begin just by doing a brief in introduction of our, the members of our team that are here tonight. Um, David Ross, Mark Arena, and Jonathan Ross, all with the applicant, um, primarily with Atlantic Realty, are here uh, today. And they'll, um, one of them will be speaking primarily, but if you have questions for any of them, they're available. Uh, Joe Kajeski, who I know uh, you're familiar with, is a principal engineer with COA Barrett. He's the engineer on the project and will be presenting the, the site plan. Um, Nee Paul is with Big Nell, Watkins, and Hasser. 
uh, an architectural firm. He's the architect and will present uh, some of the renderings of the project. We also have Mike Lenhart, uh, the president of Lenhart Traffic Consulting uh, here to address traffic issues. He'll speak to you a little bit about that um, as well. Um, so for our, our presentation, um, Joe's gonna start uh, with the overall site plan, uh, and then Mike will talk a little bit about traffic. Uh, Nee will also present some of the renderings to you um, from an architectural side. I can touch on a couple of the legal issues, including the one uh, Mr. Hauser just, just spoke on, and then David Ross um, with Atlantic Realty will share a little bit more about the project <coughs> when we're done. So I'll turn it over to Joe and let oh, him Very start. good. Thanks, Chris. Um, so I just wanted to, uh, staff introduced the project, um, and I just wanted to show this aerial view. Um, to sh it's a little bit, well, it's the same aerial view, but a different outline than what's in your packet, because it, the project actually includes three properties. Um, the large shopping center property, um, the hotel motel property that's partly uh, currently demolished, and then the small office building uh, fronting Three Notch Road. So that that red boundary that you see there is the actual limits of the site, uh, a little less than 25 acres. Is it possible to identify the areas for people? I mean, we can look at that, and I mean, I know what the movie theater, I mean, the old hotel and stuff is, but can you identify? Is there a way to have control? Point? I guess of the uh, <clears throat> of the mouse. That's the problem. Um, can that be done? Um, can we yeah. just? Could you just like go around to each one of the areas and and have it explain to what it is? Could you like point to each building uh, this one at a time? This but is the this is the theater. We start with this, and um, this is the the old hotels that the hotel that doesn't do anything anymore. Um, I think this. I think this building is also empty, right? It's currently vacant. It was a uh, office building. Okay. And this is a bank. This is Bank of America. Right. Okay. Um. These are. One of these. Uh, this the Southern Tire building, and then there is a big lot. Here. Uh. This. One, Just I for reference, when, also that what we'll describe as Building C, um, so it contains multiple tenants. Most of the, the centers do. Next building down, what we'll describe as Building A. Um, do you want me to? Yeah, you, you're good. There we go. Good. <clears throat> good. And then the final building there is Building B. Um, which contains the gymnastic center. Okay. Thank you. So the uh, project, you can go back one slide, please. Thank you. Either one. Uh, the project includes uh, the complete removal or demolition of the existing hotel motel that's, again, partially demolished now. Uh, the small office building on three notch just to the north of that hotel. Um, the existing bank and along with a portion of the existing um, office building with the white roof there. So we're demoing a portion of that building itself. The project, uh, proposed project includes, you can go to the next slide if you like, um, as I described, a 19,400 square foot uh, grocer, which is going to be in Aldi with a small 1,300 square foot appendage. One more slide, if you would, Sean Lee. Thank you. Um, designed to screen the service entrance into Southern Tire. Um, the project includes repurpose of the uh, office building that we talked about being partially demolished. Um, and that's gonna become uh, th potentially three tenants of restaurant fast food use and then one tenant of limited retail. You see the one end cap unit would have a drive-through um, and what we're proposing right now is a, a, a Starbucks. Uh, as we described, the proposed or existing Bank of America is being removed and being replaced with a drive-through ATM just south of the building we just described. Slightly more north of the arrow right there. Site development includes new parking, 
for the proposed uh, building F and G, fronting Three Notch Road. Installation of an internal drive between buildings C and A, um, a little bit farther south of the cursor there. This internal drive allows parking directly in front of building A and to support those uh, tenants fronting that parking lot. And the remainder of the site will remain as existing, but be completely refurbished, restriped with the addition of landscape islands to break up the mass of existing pavement, assist with traffic flow, and provide areas for stormwater management. Uh, thought it'd be important to note, going around the site, um, the roadways along, um, the propo we propose to maintain the existing accesses off of Three Notch Road, eliminate two of the five existing accesses off of Shangri-La, so we're eliminating the first two entrances closest to Three Notch, reconfiguring two, and so basically going five to three entrances off Shangri-La, uh, no changes along Great Mills, and deleting two of the access points of, uh, along FDR, so going from eight accesses to six. The consolidation of these existing access points promotes safer vehicular movements to and from the site while maintaining the required level of service at the intersections. <clears throat> and Mike's here to speak a little bit about traffic. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, for the record, Michael Lenhart with Lenhart Traffic Consulting. Uh, we are, <clears throat> our scope of work in this uh, application um, included the following. We conducted a traffic uh, or a trip generation analysis of this site um, in order to do an apples to apples comparison. We looked at the site in its pre-existing condition as if everything was fully leased, fully functioning. Um, while there are vacancies and there have been vacancies for some time, uh, those uses could have pulled building permits, released, and you know it got into another a functioning state again. And so apples to apples, we looked at the fully leased and functioning, pre-existing, compared to what is proposed with this redevelopment. And it's actually a slight reduction in, in trips. It's, it's negligible, but slight reduction. And therefore, <clears throat> traffic impact study was not required. Uh, we did, um, as part of our efforts, conduct traffic counts, and uh, we conducted a draft traffic impact study in the event that we did need one, we did not need one. Um, the, uh, the study intersections that would have been required uh, would have been Shangri-La at 235, FDR 235, FDR 246, uh, Shangri-La 246 and all the site access points. All of those currently operate at level of service A. Uh, given that there are a number of vacancies in the site, we added in uh, site traffic as if it were fully functioning and uh, everything would be a level of service B or better. Uh, B is in boy or better. Uh, this in the development district allows for up to a level of service D. And so, um, Again, traffic study was not required, but it would meet the requirements uh, if one had been required. And uh, we do expect that for the phase two development of this site, it will require a traffic impact study for submittal. And I should say as well, State Highway reviewed this and uh, I, I don't believe they had any comments or requests. Let me ask you a quick question while I'm thinking about it. Um, even though it's in the future, since I noted it in here and um, it was just noted, what is going to be in phase two and when is something like that planned? Since a traffic impact study would be required, it's going to be something that generates, you know, more than the required 50 sure. peak hour trips. I can tell you the applicant is looking at a, a several different scenarios, um, some with a multi or with a residential component uh, being townhomes some re redoing the existing theater um, to potentially a daycare. So I understand they may want to be out of their lease. Um, don't want to sort of confuse matters too much. There, there probably will be a phase two development of the site, but it's still in the planning stages. And certainly the applicant can speak more to that uh, more comfortably at least than I can. Um, 
either now or, or a little bit later if you'd like. No, that's fine. I'm just curious because I've I've seen it in here. Yes, sir. In the Mr. Leinhardt, um mentioned it. Let me ask, let me just make one more statement about this area. I worked in that area for many years. I think eliminating some of them, the eight ways that you can get in and out. A lot of people use that area for a cut through. Mm -hmm. So I think the area gets a lot of traffic that's not even associated with the shopping center <clears throat> with the with the center. Just a, as a good note for you, I think it gets a lot of and maybe eliminating some of those um, points of access and egress with some more islands and some green area may reduce some of that for the you know tenants that. We'll go in there if this is approved. So, just Agreed. on a good note. Yeah. Piggybacking off of him, the um, the lane that you're adding between big lots and I don't know what the store is to the, to the right of that. Is that a, a two way traffic in in between those two buildings, or is that a one way lane? It's proposed as two way. Okay. With parking on one perpendicular parking on one side. On the big lot side. Correct. <coughs> So a couple questions. <clears throat> so, um, Mr. Linhardt, you said that uh, there wasn't enough uh, change in um, uh, uh, traffic generation to uh, impact uh, having a uh, requiring a traffic impact slip. Correct. Um, but we were talking about phase two, possibly. <coughs> um, if that came about, would <clears throat> all the, the this this being the new standard? Would then that evaluation be remade to see whether or not the second phase required the traffic impact study? We anticipate that the, the second phase would require a study. Oh, okay. Because I actually I was quite surprised not to see one of those in this packet because of you know the size of it. But realizing that some of the the places that are there, even though they're vacant, were very low um, trip generation types of places, I can I can see where that math works out the way it does. Right. I can say that. Um, Driving from the gymnastic center uh, to get to 235, uh, right where the proposed Aldi is, there was always a point of conflict between people coming out of Southern Tide or people coming off of um, 235. <laughs> there was like three points of traffic, all kind of, and there was always this big question. And I was always just trying to avoid that that movement because I thought there was going to be an accident. And seeing this plan definitely looks like it's going to calm the traffic going through there and at least let people know where they're supposed to go. So that's definitely um, a welcomed improvement, I would say. <laughs> that's it for now. Okay, go ahead. Um, you come up? Yeah, you want to uh, go to the next We're going to ask Mr. Paul to come up, the architect, uh, on the project, and he can walk through some of the renderings. Um, we know that it, that a lot of the public's been interested in what it'll look like. We know the commission would be as well. <coughs> and I'll just start. What, what you see here is an illustrative site plan um, of the proposed center. Um, the existing buildings to remain in, in the yellowish color. Um, the you can see the dark dashed outlines of the buildings to be removed and the proposed building F being the Aldi uh, there in the center and then building G being the smaller refurbished and renovated office building. You see the dashed lines around it showing the limits of the existing building itself. Um, so with that, we can go to the next slide and he can, can kind of talk you through these. Yeah, actually. Yes, sir. Can I get your yes. name and business uh, address, please? My name is uh, Nee Paul. Okay. First name is Nee and I. Last name is Paul, P-A-U-L. I'm with Bignell Watkins House of Architects. Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay. And um, I'm, I'm a principal uh, with the firm. And uh, our task is to uh, bring the aesthetic um, improvement to this, which is more fun, I think. But. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I wanted to start with, if I could just go back a little bit to that site plan. I think one of the things that was really critical uh, was looking for pedestrian connectivity, was looking for uh, nice, safe spots, good lighting. Um, and the critical thing is also, and some of you have alluded to that, is, the, is controlling the traffic and controlling the frontage of the center. And I think there's no doubt in my mind that that really improves. It gives a really nice base to the center, and it makes it 
easy for the architecture to sort of get improved that way. I think if you have good pedestrian movement, good pedestrian experience, uh, you know, the, one of the problems with the existing buildings now is a very deep can canopy. And what that does is it, it creates darkness of the storefront and they're just not very inviting and i think that's what generally this whole plan is about there's new connections there's new pedestrian connections and i think it's a and i think it's a it's a general improvement i think that it'll bear itself out that way um, so if, what we've done in the way where we presented our renderings we've done a, sort of a before and after and the idea with that is to make it easy for for folks to see, to get a sense of what we're proposing, the scale of it, the color of it. And I think, um, so this first slide, and I'll run through this very quickly. This first slide shows the existing as it is. And um, I, I don't want to criticize it too much from an architectural standpoint, but this second slide shows what the intent is, which is to bring some harmony to it, uh, use color to, uh, uh, to create continuity with the site. So make it interesting and yet make it feel cohesive was part of our idea here. And I think that, um, and, and the best way we've done that is it's, it's surgical. It's not a whole tear down everything and, and build new. It's, it's paint where you need to, replace things where you need to. And I think it's a sort of a gentle approach. And I, and I, think, that's, I think it'll be successful that way. And this was one of the <clears throat> critical aspects of the site plan where as it is now, it's, it's a space that really doesn't have much def defined use to it and defined program to it. And I think um, the next slide will show you what the plan is, is to create a, a, a nice vehicular connection from one end of the center to the other, which I think really works very well in terms of um, uh, a cohesive center, but it also improves the pedestrian experience as well. And, uh, Part of what we've done in this case is we've added new windows on the, on the south side of, uh, we call that building C, and then on building A, we've removed the, the canopies so that um, um, you can see the storefront. And with some paint and some plantings, I think it just does a, does a bit of good. Um, if you go to the next slide. Um, yeah, this is pretty much showing the same thing. We added some awnings to this, there's a pedestrian walkway. This is part of what we said about uh, the connectivity, connects one part to the other, so it's not just the cars, it's also that people can walk and places to sit, there's gonna be good lighting and make it really nice and, and uh, friendly. Uh, and then this slide shows you again the idea of trying to connect all parts of the center. So this is the FDR Boulevard, uh, you know, sort of, I hate to use the word, the word rear, but it sort of feels that way. But then again, if you go to the next slide, the idea is, you know, with color, with, um, with a cohesive palette, we can find ways to tie things together. And I think, and again, the improvement on this facade is not an entire fa facade renovation. It's in parts and pieces, so it's not, it's not bringing a hammer, it's sort of a, a bit of a, a, of, a, of, a, of a gentle way of doing it, which I think works pretty well. Um, and then this is the new building. And I think what we're happy with this is we can stay within the same palette and figure out colors that this sort of tenant would have and tie that into the existing, into the building. So we've got light colors, off-whites, we've got uh, warm grays, and we've got uh, light colors on the storefront with this, um, with this new building, and I think helps, uh, helps the presence and makes it more accepting and more welcoming. And um, you, could, you could go through these other slides. Um, the, this is the rest of the building, the rest of the food store building. Um, and it's just showing how the intent is not to create a sort of a, a you know, blank facade, just to add interest to it all the way through. Next. And uh, there's a bit of retail uh, that is attached to the existing, to the uh, food store building. It's about uh, 1,300 square feet. The idea here, I think, is to bring some nice outdoor 
um, activity, which I think is also a help with retail. You know, you need uh, you need that sort of um, outdoor. Can I get ice you cream. to get closer to the mic, please. Yes. Um, you need coffee, ice cream, that sort of nice um, um, summer activity. And I think that's what this sort of small retail does. It uh, gives you that level of imp improvement. Uh, we could move on through this. Uh, Let me ask you a quick question, Mr. Sure. Paul, yeah. since you, um, the before and after mm -hmm. photos, as nice as I think the after photos look, are they definitely going to look like that if, if, if it's approved? Or is this just a projection of, you know, it's probably not a question for you, maybe a question for the developer, but, you know, we've been shown plans before. This is what it's going to be, and it doesn't end up being that, that with finishes. Yes. So is is what you're showing, what you're, I shouldn't say what you're planning, because you can always say it's what you're planning. Is, is that the, and we don't make the final decisions, of course, it's just it's a concept sure. plan, but... Is is that what the developer is? I can speak to that from a design standpoint. Okay. What we do, and I'm sure there's still, um, uh, David Ross might have uh, something to say about that as well, but what we try to do at this stage is to develop a palette, and we assign colors to it, and we develop a, an actual program for the materials, and we present this to the owners and say, well, this is what your center would look like. And... And so, and when we make these renderings, they're, they're based on actual drawings. So it's actual, it's not just 3D for the pretty nature of it. It's actually based on footprint. So when you have real drawings that are based on what exists, and then you have a, a color palette and color selection of materials, that's pretty much the best you can do in terms of trying to project what it is that you want. And I think that's what we do on every project. You, you, you create the drawings, and then you have a palette of materials. And we'll be glad to share that with you uh, at any time. We've, we've always projected that, and I think that's guided us through this entire process. And the reason why that is useful for us is should a new tenant come in, uh, whatever, whoever that is, they'll have to fit into this palette because everyone's seen this and everybody sort of likes that. So that's the way our process works from a design standpoint. So, um, and, and we've done this for a long time, so I, I feel pretty confident that um, you, you'll get what you, you'll, it'll look like this. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not concerned about every color that you've shown on there. You know, this letter's got to be red, this is blue. I'm just wondering about the design itself. It, I mean, the plan to me looked really nice when they showed before and after, yes. you know, the actual plan itself, the way the buildings are, removing some of the old, you know, the old walkway canopies and things like that. But right. yeah. I was, that's all I was curious about. Sure. Yeah. Honestly. Just just one point. I, 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 um, I attended a couple of the meetings with regard to the project, mm -hmm. and I think it was helpful that they showed projects that they had done previously. It was, it, and it's helpful yes. to show some something that you've done yes. that people get a little more confidence moving forward, <clears throat> not knowing what it might look like, sure. but seeing things that you have done yes. and the successes that you had. I okay. think that's helpful. Okay, all right, we can we can furnish it with that. Could I say something? Yes. Um, one of the things that I notice with the before and the after um, and renderings. Is that um, the current situation as it is, there is a lot of parking lot lighting. And with the, um, the proposed changes, I don't see any lighting in the parking lots. I'm assuming that that will definitely be there. Yeah, we're, we're actually going to improve the lighting from what's there. Some of those poles are in drive aisles. They'll have to be removed. Right. Um, and the poles that do remain, we're going to put new fixtures on, and then there's a... Uh, a lot of new uh, poles as well. It just wasn't as part of the concept, but it will be part of the uh, detailed site plan. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I could add to that too, that one of the directions we got from our clients was, this has to be well lit, you can't, you can't go. So at the very least, some of the existing uh, poles are staying with new heads, and then we're adding new lighting fixtures. And so it, it, it generally brings everything up to higher 
uh, foot candle level. So, come on, question. Mm -hmm. What's the plan for the current um, tenants of What's the plan for the current tenants while all this is going on? I mean, will they be able to continue operations? Um, that's a management uh, question. Um, I, it, it, it could. We've done that in, in cases. And, and I think the way that we've done it in the past on certain projects is just the way you phase it. And then when you do things like tick off an existing canopy, you have to do things in parts to make sure that we don't demolish everything at the same time so there's access mm -hmm. and all of that just has to be planned and so we've we've done that on on shopping centers on schools that you know because things have to stay open you know so i i don't see this as a level of uh construction that would need for tenants to close it's 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 really the the facade we're dealing with um and in the entries, so I think that's doable. Okay, Howard. It might be helpful, folks that are in the audience for those kinds of questions, it might be helpful if they would come up. Yeah, if, if at some point we can have the Rosses. I went to a meeting with Merle. They, they did show, you know, other shopping centers that they had done, what they wanted to do to this one, and maybe they could give us a little bit of insight unless you're our man tonight that's going to answer those questions. No, no, that's fine. And David Ross, who, who's the principal with, with Atlantic Realty, is planning to come up and share his thoughts. I'm taking notes of the questions that have been asked that may be appropriate uh, for him to answer, but certainly he, if you'd like him now, he can come up, or, or if you want me to like finish the rendering. Three more slides. We'll just get through these. And then we'll get you up here in a minute, Mr. Yeah. Ross. <laughs> Right, and I, the last building, uh, well, there are two more buildings, and um, this uh, building uh, is right over the corner of Three Notch and, um, and, um, Shangri and Shangri La. And uh, the idea here is to reduce the size of the building. It changes the architecture, obviously, because <clears throat> what is now is not a good fit in terms of the detail. So, but the, the grand picture is it's a, it's a smaller building, and it, um, I think it makes a, it's, it's more efficient. It works well, I think. And, um, and I think because of the reduced footprint of this, of this building, there's a lot more green space up front. Um, I, that green space up front is, what, 40 feet, something about, which is significant. So I think that's a significant improvement to that corner. And um, again, the architecture is easy, you know, but it's, it's the stuff on the ground that I think that that's where the hard work is, and I think that's been done. And the last building is the theater building. I don't think we have that one. Oh. Okay. But look, this slide's interesting, and that you can, that last slide, go back to that one. You can kind of see on the upper part of that the actual, the part of the buildings that's coming off and the piece that's we're removing. So we're removing. A very substantial amount that is right up against Shangri-La right. and creating uh, room for the drive-through and then also the green space. Okay. As it relates to this building here, I notice on the plans it suggests that it's two or three different properties that are drive-throughs. Yet from the picture, I get the impression it's just one one uh, vendor there. Uh, is that really? Am I misreading the drawings here, or, or is that really just one uh, drive-through? Yeah, it's it's one drive-through the end for the end cap unit. Okay. Um, the other units will not be you know will not have drive-throughs. Oh, okay. Even though it may say that on the plans. If it does oh, say that, that's a, that's an error. Yeah. The G two and G three and G four, and you have the coffee shop, but you also have other drive-throughs on that back level, and I just didn't know how that was being arranged. Whether you're just just one drive-through and then the other things, they'll have to go in? Yes, sir. Mr. Paul, <clears throat> if you're com uh, done with your presentation, could you go back to page three of your sure. slides? I've got some questions and some comments that I think uh, could be best illustrated here. Um, so in front of the, the, currently in front of the Walgreens, Popeyes and Subway, we actually have a lot of old growth vegetation there. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it makes it difficult for the vehicles coming in and out of that driveway from the shopping center to see the pedestrians mm -hmm. sometimes. But also, having worked on my car, I've actually walked it as a pedestrian and found that in the summer, the shade was very nice. Yeah. So I guess my first question would be, you know, you're showing some nice um, uh, semi-mature trees there. Would you be removing the mature, uh, you know, landscaping that's there now, replacing it with something that would look similar to the illustration? Or would you be keeping it as is? Or what would be the, the plan for the landscaping on that and then have some follow-ups after that yeah and in, in that area we'll be maintaining what's existing um, if it's site distance or site issues we can definitely take a look at that if maybe some pruning or you know some branch yeah, I, think, I think definitely to closer to the driveway part would be good and and uh, mr paul you also mentioned a lot about pedestrians and yes. uh, that's pedestrian bicycles is something i'm very fond of and and uh, Take a, take a keen interest in um, seeing a uh, pedestrian zebra stripe or crosswalk right there yeah. is um, a big omission okay. uh, on this on this design because uh, you know th uh, at Great Mills Road uh, there are a lot of people walking up and down that um, there are a lot of people who work and, and go to these businesses don't even have vehicles um, you know if anywhere that's one place you don't want to have an omission yeah. is, is, th is there and you also it's not on this illustration but further down uh, we have the entrance way where there's the um, uh, the rental center and the la the um, uh, the dry cleaners. Uh, that's another place where you know there's quite a big entryway for vehicles, but pedestrians sometimes are caught, you know, uh, with that. Um, and then just following up on this, I mean, I know there's <clears throat> limitations in terms of the engineering where you're not uh, removing buildings, but the uh, the green buffer. Uh, between the sidewalk and these three buildings here on slide three, the Walgreens, Popeyes, and Subway. Um, as a pedestrian, it, it is nice to walk there. It, 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 you know, if you talk about walking level of service, I, I, even though it, there's a lot of traffic yeah. on that road, um, you, that green buffer is really nice. However, then the next section. You're talking about along Great Mills or? Right, along Great yeah. Mills. Yeah, we're, um, we're not I, touching that. It's going to remain. Well, right, but what I'm saying is that um, in the next section there, there is no 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 green. Um, uh, Farther green, down, I see what you're saying. Further down, like where where um, currently where there was the deli there and the other restaurant, um, you know, some, seeing something more consistent like that with with a new development. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that you know you're not touching those buildings, so there's limitations. Yeah, I understand that, but if something could be done to address just the pedestrians, and I'm specifically pointing out um, Great Mills because of the pedestrian activity there. Sure. Um, I, I believe, just from my own observations, that on Three Notch, um, where there's higher speeds, I think there's less connections to neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, you're not gonna have as, as much of a concern there. Right. Um, but this is a, a pedestrian corridor that I think um, needs to definitely look at a little bit more closely. Yes. Point very well taken. We'll make sure that we. Um, uh, don't Those are my comments. That. Yes. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? And before we call Mr. Ross up, if, there, if there's not any other questions at this time, just a couple of the uh, standards or, or legal issues. I know some of them have been raised um, by public comment prior to this hearing, just to address a couple, and we're happy to answer any questions about them. Uh, one of the questions was how does this tie in with the Lexington Park Development District Plan? I know this commission is very uh, familiar with that, uh, all the work um, you all put into uh, developing the 2016 plan that's in effect. This area is in the uh, downtown sub area of the Lexington Park Development District. Section 2.1 of the plan talks about that area specifically. And I didn't count the number of times, but I think almost every sentence or every other sentence talks about redeveloping the areas that are there already with commercial and other uses that are there. Um, if you read through that, that's why I'm so excited to be here with this applicant. I've sat before you so many times saying, why are there things going up 235? Why aren't, why aren't we redoing the things that are empty and that, don't, that, that need to be redeveloped? And you have one here uh, willing to do that and invest in our community. And that's why I'm so excited about it. Um, you know, it does say to concentrate commercial development primarily in the development district. That, that's what this does. Talks about encouraging infill development uh, with creative and carefully designed commercial areas. We think that's um, an example. This is a prime example of that. 
um, achieving efficient use of the land. You can see that uh, this plan does that and fo fostering a sense of community and remedying kind of negative conditions that exist. And that I think that um, area of where they're going to connect with a road that is now a sidewalk that has an overhang. I can remember as a kid going to Baskin Robbins there and thinking that was really cool. Um, but when you look at it now, I don't think people feel safe walking down there. I don't think that people feel the same way there and opening it up the way that they're doing, um, I think will really add to that sense of what this, this uh, development needs. Um, so we think it's on all fours with the, with the Lexington Park uh, development plan. Um, there are some variances that will need to be requested. Um, this is a redevelopment site, not a site starting from scratch. Uh, uh, Mr. Fazekas, as you were saying, there are buildings that already exist, so, so our client is working around them. You can see they're, they are demolishing significant buildings that are already there, such as the hotel that I know has become a real eyesore uh, in recent years. Um, and it, it, their, their <coughs> request is to eliminate the 65-foot Type B buffer along Three Notch and Shangri-La and Great Mills Road and FDR. Um, and to reduce the minimum landscaping requirements from what would need, be needed for a brand new development. But when you look at the plans and some uh, all the slides that Nee just went through, you can see how much more landscaping there's going to be on this, how many more dry vials there are. Um, even though it might not meet the pure standards if you're developing from scratch, it's adding a lot more than what's there already. Uh, my client um, understands and is prepared if we're approved tonight, that that would be a condition that those variances be granted. We've taken the steps to be available on the next Board of Appeals hearing, and they're fully prepared to do that. Um, the last issue that I think um, Attorney Hauser uh, touched on very well was the tax amendment process. Um, we know that that's not a typical condition that, that is seen in every application, but this is, we think, a unique situation. My client has been working with many people in the county and the staff and with the Navy um, about that issue. And um, we discovered the new guidance that had been issued by the Navy during some of those meetings. The county's been very receptive to updating our, our ordinance to meet those. Um, there's some uses that are, are different. I think there's some that weren't allowed that may have used to been. But the uses that we need here are allowed within that guidance. It is um, some guidance from April of last year, April of 2022. Uh, my client has taken it upon itself to uh, prepare the application for that tax amendment, and we're working with the county attorney's office to make sure the language is appropriate to meet the county's needs. Um, and hopefully that will be successful should the county commissioners um, choose to do that. So the other condition, I think, is the standard condition that the planning commission has of the proposed conditions that are in the staff report uh, for any traffic improvements. Um, and you can see that the entrances are being minimized, which... You know, personally driving through there a lot, I think that'll make it a lot safer as well, and I think the experts agree on that. Um, so on those issues, that's how um, we intend to address those issues, and we understand they would be a condition to any approval tonight, and my client's willing to, to proceed with them. Um, so if you don't have questions for me, I can ask David Ross to come up. I mean, Merle, did... Yeah, I just have a comment. Sure. So um, along the lines that we used talked about, some 10 years ago, we met with a Captain Subchuck. Three of us on this board were in those meetings. Mrs. Robrick specifically brought up the redevelopment of Mellison Plaza hmm. and what the Navy might think about it and how we would. I know, know that we got a definitive answer uh, from the Navy at the time. But the fact of the matter is, and you're talking about 2.1.1, um, refers to that um, uh, central business district. Um, and while I know that redevelopment in, in, in Lexington Park makes people nervous, um, new development comes, competition comes, um, and I can speak directly to that. Having been in Lexington Park for so many years, um, I got wished out of Lexington Park. Everybody wished for new things, and one, one at a time I moved to other things. Um, you know, I, and I don't know. I don't know what the central business district is. I guess I waited around to find out where it would manifest itself, whether it would be at St. Mary's Square or it would be up this way. You know, but it appears to me that's this is where what's happening, and that this is ultimately going to be some sort of a gateway 
that's mentioned in the Lexington Park Development District Master Plan. Um, and it does speak to uh, it, it, it does speak to the build out and the retail. It also speaks to the, to the build out of of um, residential units and where they might fall and where they might be height this you know heights the, you know all those sorts of things. And um, I would uh, I would recommend that the applicant in the second phase reach out and um, find himself a copy of those two studies. Uh, that we that uh, we're done, um, and see if any of the if if any of those things that would incentivize them would make sense moving forward with regard to the housing component. If in fact they they move forward, the other thing I would share is that in the other two meetings they referenced daycares um, for decades. Uh, there was always uh, an issue with daycares in St. Mary's County. So one at a time, folks came before this planning commission um, and stood up daycares, privately owned daycares along 235. And this is going to speak to communication. Unbeknownst to any of us, the Navy was building a daycare on the base with a capacity of 375. We didn't know that. And certainly the people that had made an investment outside the base didn't know it either. So it opened. I found out about it in the enterprise. Hmm. Hmm. Um, it opened. Uh, the rates were less. The daycares on the outside all closed. So our communication, while you know, we, we rely on the base, I'm, I'm, part of my success in my career has been because of the base. I'm not opposed to that. I would like for, for to have better communication with regard to this, this development is a village center and there's a fence and there's a town center on the other side. We, can, we can't be um, in conflict with one another. We have to do this collaboratively somehow. Um, and so, and I don't have an answer to that. I will say this, I know that the one, t the one and only time I ever was able to be in a room with a with a, a commander on the base was ten years ago, and we were there because we were allowed to be there because we submitted questions ahead of time, and I don't have a problem with that. We asked some really difficult questions of Captain Subchuck, and he was very upfront with us. We found, I made a comment to him. I said, if, you know, the Navy is going to dictate what goes on outside of that fence then they need to bring their checkbook. Credit to the Navy, they did exactly that. You know, we have been the beneficiary of, of places, you know, that have gone into preservation because of some of that repping money and because of collaboration. So it's my understanding that the Navy has, has apparently sent a letter supporting this, which is terrific, good for them. But I would, I would sh I'll simply share that if you're going to do a daycare or anybody's going to do anything, th the notion of build it and they will come isn't applicable in most places. Mm. Um, it may be, be better off to know whether or not it's needed before you decide to invest in it. And that's just my perspective. But again, as to what you were talking about, Chris, uh, it, is, it is in alignment with the Lexington Park Development Master Plan. And some of the comments that I saw online today were, you know, just not accurate. Uh, some of the information wasn't accurate. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. So I can ask Mr. Ross yes. to come up now and he can answer some of the other questions. David, if you want to come up. Mr. Ross, I did get to swear you in, did I not? Yes, you did. Thank you, sir. Could you give us your name and business address, please? Yes. Uh, my name is David Ross. I am uh, president of Atlantic Realty Companies. The address is 8150 Leesburg Pike, Vienna, Virginia, Suite 1100. Thank you, sir. Members of the commission, thank you very much for, uh, for allowing us to present before you this evening. Uh, we, uh, I'm here along with uh, our uh, president of the day-to-day -day operations of the company, uh, ARC Management, Mark Arena, 
and Jonathan Ross, uh, my son, is in charge of development and construction. Atlantic uh, is a company that's been around for some time. Uh, we formed in 1992. Uh, prior to that, I worked at the Rouse Company uh, and another company down in Virginia, but I've been doing this for 45 years now. Uh, the region is our home. Uh, we have developed many properties, some 10 million square feet of acquiring, developing um, many types of properties. We're doing senior housing, we're doing retail centers, not malls, uh, shopping, uh, professional office buildings, regular office buildings, medical office, uh, a lot of different mix of uses. And uh, and from a location standpoint, uh, we are develop or have acquired and redeveloped properties as far north as Newark, Delaware, outside the, uh, uh, the confines of the University of Delaware. That was a 1955 retail center. Uh, and many of the examples that uh, Mr. Evans referred to that we showed to some of our meetings will certainly make available to all of you. Uh, there's something to be learned about each of these examples. That center in 1955 had similar problems that we found with our acquisition of Millicent Plaza. Uh, Montgomery Village Center was built in 1974. We acquired it and renovated, redeveloped that. Also similar problems to what we've seen here. Uh, we bought properties in Baltimore City, uh, the Alameda um, on Alameda Boulevard, uh, difficult part of town, but, but we worked through it and worked well with the city and the community uh, to make that into a successful project. Uh, Reston, as you know, is a, is a quote unquote new town and, and uh, had five village centers. We redeveloped two of those and, and, and worked hard through those. So uh, all in all, we, we try to create environments with our retail centers that are pedestrian friendly and, and basically attractive to the community. We know the community is the client and the community in these centers we want to go for the next 50 years. Millicent uh, developed this property in 1967, 68. Uh, when they started, they added pieces to it. Uh, we were fortunate to be able to acquire the property. Uh, next month we'll make it uh, our two year anniversary of the first uh, acquisition and then once we got our foot a foot in the door we uh, we had some struggles but we we were able to manage acquiring the hotel property uh, which was extremely difficult to work with but we were able to acquire it and then the uh, the property uh, next to that as well so all in all we're about just under 25 acres as was mentioned and if I could ask that uh, you put up that illustrative, if you would, I wanted to point out that part of the reason of acquiring this additional properties was to was to really create being situated between gates one and two on three notch. We wanted to create a really nice front door to the center. And with that existing office building and what they label building G and with the existing, with the acquisitions, we're able to basically create a really nice frontage. And so we plan to landscape, manicure, and irrigate that section of the property so it stays nice. And many of our uh, properties, uh, you know, just, just have that. And I can promise you that what you see in the renderings is what you're gonna get. Um, we're, uh, the architect did a great job of planning We've modified those plans multiple times, and now we're working with contractors uh, fine-tuning those. And then as far as the <coughs> tenants are concerned, they will remain open. So we will be uh, continuously operating and developing as we are able to big lots and, and the remaining smaller tenants will be open. Uh, that 1,300-foot structure that's adjacent to Aldi's uh, was placed there to provide a, a, a boundary for a nice plaza. And we're working with uh, the, the community now, we're gonna find a place for some arts and things like that. But the idea is to really engage and then create a nice place, a nice environment. 
but that 1300 foot building also is established right near uh, the Southern Tire, one of the older tenants in the property. Uh, we couldn't basically just say Southern Tire, we'll see you later, but we are uh, basically using that back wall to block the bad part of the center, which is the, the back area where they, where they do the tire storage and the trailers and the, and the work that goes on. So you have the nice retail fronts and then you'll have pedestrian connections. Uh, so we're excited. We think that a lot of the centers that we found where you had an inability to get to these different places inside the center um, without being able to walk or drive a car created a negative perception of safety. And those are generally the places that stay vacant. In addition to that, poor lighting and really just an unattractive environment also creates to the vacancy. So, so once again, uh, thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions, Mr. Ross? I have a couple. Um, of some of the new um, prospective tenants shown on the plan, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Starbucks, Aldi, whatever fast food. You, you, goes in there do you have any people under contract already or is that just a you're hoping starbucks comes in there uh we do not you know, we do not have a signed lease as of yet with starbucks we're negotiating one all these is fully executed uh we're on a tight time frame to try to accommodate their 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 desire to open and that would be in 2024 so if approved and we're able to efficiently process our plans, uh, we would be looking to get underway at the beginning of the year and uh, be completed before the end of the year, before Thanksgiving, if we can do that. Okay, yeah, that was my, that was my second question, was the time frame of phase one, which is as soon as you can. <clears throat> Correct. And the third question is, does, does your company Main, um, keep ownership and manage all your properties or do you sell them off? No, we, Lead it. yes, sir. We, uh, we typically own and operate properties for the long term. Uh, many of our buildings, uh, we continue to own today from, uh, the mid nineties when we started acquiring some of the existing buildings. So our desire here in, one of the benefits that, that the site does enjoy is being located in an opportunity zone. And so that uh, incentivizes the owner to own the property for more than a decade. So we don't have any intention of running uh, and selling. In fact, we're looking for further opportunities uh, once we get this one well positioned and uh, respected in the community. Okay, thank you. Mr. Ross, could, yes. um, earlier I had asked a question about the tenants mm -hmm. and how you're going to manage that throughout mm -hmm. this construction period, reconstruction period. Yes. Can you tell me how you handled that in previous? Sure. Uh, many of the centers that we've redeveloped, uh, <clears throat> where we cut in roadways and things of that nature, they have to be done with a lot of precision <clears throat> and they have to be organized. So where we're taking down a canopy, for example. We will do that in the off hours, some of the demolition, so when the tenant's not opening, and then we will go ahead and install uh, walkways like you might see in an urban setting on, on a city street where you have uh, a, a place to walk through um, and, and visit the storefront. So uh, I can tell you the, the canopy that exists between uh, the family dollar and errands and the dry cleaner uh, that was mentioned in terms of uh, there's a hard canopy there. It creates a dark area. It's not attractive. And that's going to be some of the area that we uh, take that canopy off and install the, the, uh, the awnings. But every one of those tenants will be able to be open. Okay. Thank you. Stan? So, um, I know in one of the presentations you talked about Starbucks. 
Uh, the Starbucks has a drive through and it also has some seating inside. Is mm-hmm. that accurate? Correct. Do you have any idea about the numbers of seating that will be inside? No, I don't know exactly. Uh, and and that, I only bring that up for one reason. Um, in a, another project, another redevelopment project some years ago, where Dairy Queen is now, there was an issue with regard to the number of seats. Um, and I remember Phil Shire, the director at the time, um, there was some not really negotiable. I don't know what I don't I don't know what the number of seats are allowed, to be honest with you, and that's why I asked. Um, so uh, that that was a, a question that I have. Another one, this is just a comment, and this is very personal, and I have no absolutely no control over this at all. But I'm gonna ask anyway. Some years back, we had a developer come and do a presentation for us uh, on a project. Great looking project, he did a wonderful job. It was, it was named the Patuxent Town Center. Not so far from this place, actually. It was sort of replicated the Bowie Town Center a little bit. Diagonal parking, roundabouts, that whole thing. That said, when people hear PAX, it is absolutely synonymous with the Naval Air Warfare Center. It just is. Um, you can go to California and say PAX, and they know exactly where it is. You say Patuxent, they don't have a clue. We do. I mean, people that have born and raised here. And so it's not so much that I'm opposed to the Navy. I'm not. The Navy's been very good to me over those years. But to me, Patuxent is just a much it, it just it, it it hits my ears so much better than Pax does, um, and so n- now I've said my piece. Um, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I mean, I just think that um, as a gateway, as a gateway to Lexington Park, um, and someone made a comment earlier, you know, about naming it something else. I don't, you know, but Texans fine with me. Um, but that new gateway. This is not a gateway to the Naval Air Warfare Center. This is a gateway to the development district in Lexington Park. So. That's only coming out. Okay. Thanks. By the way, the uh, Starbucks I know is 2,500 square feet, so that's a, that's the size. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what the real issue was with Dairy Queen. They were they were too many seats, and they had to work. I don't know what they did, but they did something to work out. It was a it was a re- reduced number of seats, is what they got. Um, they wanted X, whatever that was, but they wound up with reduced number because of the the acus. So. So. I'm sure this will come out in the final concept site plan, but <clears throat> I saw in one of the emails here, there was a net reduction of 69,271 square feet of retail space. Is it a safe assumption that there's also a um, reduction of impervious surface on the, the 25, roughly 25 acre um, project area? There, there is a reduction in impervious area. I don't have those numbers right in front of me. Okay. I don't, the, it, and I don't know that it was that much retail. I'd have to double check, but a lot of the square footage that came away was the hotels. Okay. So oh, you okay. Stories, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm just look, and, yeah, I, I didn't read the whole thing here. Too. <clears throat> and I don't need to know the number itself. Um, my concern, though, is just and, and to bring to, to your attention, uh, FDR Boulevard floods at the stop sign in the back corner of this property where Barefoot Graphics is in Nicolette Park. I don't know. I've not gotten out there in my car and trying to see where the water's flowing from. So I'm not sure if it's coming from the, the municipal park or if it's coming from, you know, the back end of the lot. Um, but currently that is a very big sea of asphalt. Yes. Um, I'm hoping that when it goes through final uh, review for your stormwater that, you know, um, that at least that is looked at to make sure that this is not contributing uh, any more to, to the existing problem. You know, whether or not it's, it's your problem, you know, that's just something I wanted to bring up. Um, it's it's not deep enough that I can't cross it with my small truck, but <laughs> <laughs> but I know I, I sometimes see pedestrians back there, especially kids, uh, often with skateboards, who are you know walking up and, and walking around trying not to get their feet wet, you know. So that's all I had to say. Um, three things I was pleased with, I'll say. Um, Mr. Hauser came up earlier and talked about the AQs that has been fine tuned. Um, and will be on paper here within within reasonable amount of time. Um, and you're all working with the AQ zone so that everything is 
is straight, is straight up. Um, no letters from the Navy I, I saw in our packet or anything like that, and that might be brought up later. But um, Lexington Park's going to get a new grocery store. Um, everybody always wants another grocery store just for the sheer fact of having one. Um, competition and just, you know, it's not quite as big as the other one, but sometimes you don't need big to get groceries. You, know, you can do it in the right spot. And um, the, exist the existing tenants are going to stay, which – I'm pleased with, with you all working with them. I know a lot of times when you when you put up canopies, uh, they bring out, I'll say, portable facades to put mm -hmm. just so nothing will fall on anybody, you know, and keep everything straight. New York City's famous for that. I mean, I've never seen a clear street in New York City That's a fact. ever. <laughs> so, um, and they're experts at doing, you know, things like that. But um, everything that you all are bringing to this, I think is, is really going to be going to vastly improve that corner. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any comments? Questions? I have one more question for Mr. Kajeski. He could probably answer this. Um, I had made a note and I had forgot it was on another page. <laughs> on the Starbucks, and I'm, I'm sure somebody who's designed this has looked at them. The one that we have up in California on the <laughs> on St. Andrew's Church Road, it's like they're giving stuff away there all day long. Mm. I mean, the traffic backs up out into the road, out into the driveway. So I'm just wondering if, has any additional measures been looked at or taken into consideration for this? I'm not sure what it is about Starbucks and Chick-fil-A in this county, but the, the, the lines are, like I say, it's just like a, looks like free groceries. <laughs> I'm just curious. I noticed you bought it all the way around the building with the drive-in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've tried to maximize the length of the of the drive-through. It can currently hold just in the drive-through itself hold 13 vehicles, and then of course we have all you know potentially even more stacking within that parking lot. Um, so pretty much they would just wrap around the building and stay in their own parking lot. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Because most of the places don't seem to do that. They filter out into the roads and we've actually and then made the uh the the driveway connection just past the building uh one way so that you don't have cars coming in say northbound into that drive trying to make a right into the uh drive through if that makes sense on your plan so they have to come through the other way to get to it basically have to come from the three notch road direction um, to, to enter the, the drive through. The drive through is on the Shangri-La side. Starts out on the South side of the building and then wraps around. Correct. The actual window. Yes, that's correct. On the Shangri-La. Yes. Okay. It's just one lane. Yes. Okay. I, I know, um, we did one of these plans in Charlotte hall not long ago, and they're going to had proposed a Chick-fil-A. And seeing the problems that Chick Fil A's have, they're putting in two and three lanes to yeah to filter in, into just because it's such a um, like I say it's such a problem. And I just have to notice a lot of Starbucks, not just ours here, seems to have that problem all day long, pretty much all day. It just amazes me. Just curious, where was that one you were speaking of? Charlotte, Charlotte. Hall. Well, that was the Chick Fil A. Oh, okay. Chick -fil -A, that they proposed. Yeah, yeah they're they're a different animal. It's got so. like. Yeah, instead really of having nice like one lane, it's got like two and then three that can filter back into the two just for storage of the of the vehicles. Right. It was a <clears throat> seemed to be a good plan. I'm sure it'll be outdated, you know, once it's <laughs> if it's put in. And, but I'm just curious about that. And having children that live on that telephone, they order it and pay for it and walk in the front door and it's sitting on the counter for them. Um, I haven't had that that um, urge yet in life but um <laughs> they seem to have it pretty well down pat so anyway. okay is there anything else okay anything else from y'all no i mean yes, we're sir. certainly available to answer questions from any public comments as well uh get these back okay we're going to go ahead and open it up public testimony i have three names on, on our list tonight uh, the first was Bob Randall. Mr. 
Mr. Randall, I got to swear you in earlier, didn't I? Yes, you did. Thank you, sir. Yes, my name is Bob Randall. I live at uh, 19711 Teddy Way, Lexington Park. Um, I have some questions regarding, in a broader sense, the AQs, and, and Mr. Evans, they kind of tie in with some of your comments earlier. Um, I, I believe in the AQs regs. I think they're good. I, I think that encroachment is a hazard. I'm familiar with what the Virginia Beach area has gone through and NAS Oceana has gone through regarding encroachment and the impacts of that, and it's, it's, it's bad. So what we're doing is, is good, having an AQs and a set of regulations. Um, however, uh, my, my question really is, when was the last substantive kind of bilateral review done of the AQs regulations and the, based on the underlying risk assessment that's, that's behind the whole thing? Um, and I'm speaking primarily of the, the regulations that deal with um, accident hazard, not, not noise, uh, which is kind of a separate problem. And it's, it's quantifiable noises. But on the risk assessments, I don't know how old those are. I don't know how bilateral they were. I don't know whether it's just something that came from the Navy that was accepted and incorporated into our local regulations. But I think they, sh if they're not recently updated or fairly recently updated, I, I wonder why. When I flew here a long time ago in the 70s and worked on base through the 80s and 90s, starting in the 70s, we had an atrocious accident rate, Ms. Robeck. Certainly remembers that. Um, it got better progressively through time, and the Navy now has done a very, very good job, and locally as well as Navy wide, reducing the accident rate, certainly by an order of magnitude. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what what accident rate the AQ's regulations are based on. What the assumptions are, I can remember. I've been here through since '74. And I can remember one local accident that landed, that was, occurred outside the boundaries of the base and, and over land, and that was an A3 in Great Mills many years ago. I think in that case, it was, it was fatal. It was a terrible accident from the Navy's perspective. But I think as far as the county, that there wasn't much, in, there wasn't much material impact on the ground, let me put it that way. Um, I, I can't recall another aircraft accident on county, county territory, if you will, outside the base of the water, which is where most of them have occurred, um, thankfully from the local, local perspective. So again, my question is, is just, wh what, what are these AQ's regulations based on? I don't quarrel with them necessarily, I just don't know what they're based on. And was it a mutually agreed set of solutions to a risk assessment that everybody was aware of? Or does it just come from the Navy? Um, that's my question. And I, 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 I don't know that it's within the purview of this council. It probably isn't. But I'd, I'd like an answer. If it comes, should come from somewhere else, then that's fine, too. Uh, thank you very much. I thought we had the representative. Wait a second. Here. Do we have the, the Navy representative with us this evening? He's not here. Bad night not to come. Um, maybe in the future, um, if we could have a report from the from the Navy about the AQs, the changes that are that are coming, and um, what's still on on the books. If we I, could, I'd, I'd like as well, if I may, f to hear the county side of it too. I I don't. My background is Navy, and I care a lot about the Navy, but I, I don't think that I, it should be a, a two-way discussion. Absolutely should be. Yes. You're right. Yeah. It, it absolutely should be. Yeah. Um, and I don't. And I'm not saying that it never. It, it hasn't been. Right. I mean, uh, there's certain discussions that we've had, you know, back and forth, and I would suggest that there there were some some agreements, and I and I say that because the county, we moved churches. We moved schools. Yes, we did. Uh, we made those accommodations with regard to ACUs, uh, especially in one, anything that was in one, and certainly with two. And in this project, this redevelopment project, um, the county, you know, the county doesn't, the county will um, listen to recommendations by the Navy. And the Navy has sent a letter uh, to this developer or to land use and growth management, and they're okay with this. 
Um, and I'm, I'm, but I don't have any clue about what new, right, new information might be available. Right. Um, what causes a variance to be approved? Right. By, I, by the Navy. Well, I'm just saying, but you know, we we've gone through the, the noise attenuation part of it. Sure. Uh, you know, we 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 went through you know uh, that trying to make accommodations for that. I mean, we even you know, Jack Doherty had bumper stickers. You know, um, jet noise, sound of freedom. <laughs> so I mean. And that's not an that's not an accommodation. That's just to let people know that when you hear when you, it's it's noisy. I mean, we have a right to farm um, ordinance. Uh, maybe we can have a right to fly ordinance. I don't know. I certainly know that the Navy's capable of doing in-depth risk risk assessments. They do it all the time when they develop airplanes and systems that fly. Um, and, and I'm, I'm not questioning at all the validity of whatever they did originally, but I don't know how often that's been updated. And I certainly don't know from the county side how much involvement there's been in, in also working with the Navy to see what the impact of those risk assessments ought to be, what's reasonable. I that's mean, they, the they did a wonderful a, a master plan for a town center. It's extremely well written. Most people haven't seen it, but it's a really well written town center. Yeah. Uh, uh, document and perhaps in that document someplace, um, it wouldn't be current. Um, it would be yeah. something that you know is, uh, yeah. has been in the past. So, but maybe you're right. Maybe uh, the county reaching out to the navy and having some uh, bilateral. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. But it has to be that. Yeah. I mean, unless the navy is going to decide it's going to buy St. Mary's County. You're going to have to figure some way for people to get along together. I think so. there's more hazard of an airplane falling on your head around the airport right, you know, you're right. than over in front of the base. And right the other there. one I remember was on the base, um, a Connie, a Super Connie, crashed on the base. And I was a counselor at Pond 2. On the base. Watched it, we watched it come through the trees. Uh, and so that's the only other one I remember outside of the one that you're talking about in Great Mills. Mm -hmm. yes. so, and there are probably some others that were close. And there were a lot of pilots that were killed. Sure. Test pilots that were killed. Most of those folks lived in Absolutely. Town Creek. Absolutely. That's all. I got. Thank you for your right. suggestion on that, Mr. Randall. We'll, we'll follow through on that, and um, we'll make sure that you you know when that meeting's coming. So Thank your you your much. knowledge, if it comes to the table, will be valuable to us. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. I'm gonna have a little problem with this one. I, I have Catherine up front. And Catherine, I can't read your last name. Sorry. Group, sir. Sorry. And I remember swearing y'all in. Okay. Uh, my name is Catherine Group. Address is one five four eight zero Point Lookout Road. Business address is four six nine one five South Shangri La, um, in Lexington Park. Um, I'm here. Uh, I actually just found out about the. I own St. Annie's Coffee. I don't know if I said that. Um, that's on South Shangri-La. And when I opened six years ago, I was really put through the ringer um, by the county uh, for the ACUs and um, being in the ACUs and uh, fought through that and provide, I think I provide a <laughs> good service for the community with a coffee shop and two, two rooms, a living room and a family room for kids to come play and families to congregate. And um, the current situation with traffic around our area is already pretty challenged. Uh, I, I respect the folks that presented. The, I know they probably know far more than I do about traffic. Um, but I, I find it hard to believe that adding, seeing the Starbucks that's up in Harris Teeter that was referenced, seeing that <coughs> in our in on Shangri La on the same street, I have a hard time believing that that won't <coughs> cause traffic issues. Um, also, trying to hop over two lanes to get to Pax River, um, and just generally, I don't uh, I don't know that it's um, I don't know that the the plan reflects maybe what I went to the presentation at the Lex BA meeting, and sometimes I feel like the plan doesn't necessarily reflect the locals, what the locals want. And I asked specifically that comment of like, did you did you survey the local folks of what they might like to see? Um, and there, to my knowledge, hasn't been a survey done. Um, so I'm a concerned business owner. Obviously, I also make coffee, and um, I. 
have a long history of trying to keep a business serving the community in Lexington Park. And um, I think that I'm worried that while I really appreciate the Aldi coming in, I really appreciate the revitalization of Millicent Plaza, it's much needed. Um, I think that just being thoughtful about what stores go in there and what price the lease is going to be at is also a really important consideration to make sure that local business owners can access those spaces and that we can keep some of the business in Millicent Plaza local, local or accessible and local. Um, and that's it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Just, I, just a comment. I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> I. I owned a building adjacent to Millicent Plaza. Um, Clark's Flooring is there now. Okay. And for decades, I ran, we had various businesses that we ran from there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing you're going to, one thing you'll understand, you're much younger than I am. One thing you're going to understand is that um, communities have wishes. They wish for lots of things. And so, in my case, they wished for a Kmart. Mm -hmm. And it came. And then they wished for a Lowe's. It came, and then a Walmart, and then a BJ's, and every time something came, it took a little piece of me. Um, and so I was a small business. I, I learned more about when not to be in business as opposed to, it's easy to set up a business. I mean, well, it is. Well, it is easy to set up a business depending on what your business is. A little bit sure. of money, a little storefront, fine. Getting out of a business sometimes, is difficult, and I'm not suggesting you should do that. I certainly am not. Because I saw, that. I mean, I've been, I've been to your establishment, it's great, and I don't think that the product that you have at St. Enes is the same as Starbucks. It's I definitely think it's, not. I think that the struggle for me is that um, when I put in my patio during the pandemic, the first question I got when I had my first event out there for the community was, um, could you not do that in the AQs? Can we not have people conjugate? Like, I, it's just, I, I guess a way to wrap it up would be like, I think you should spread the message far and wide that people are allowed to now do more development in the AQs um, for that, from the, the, because I don't think the message has been received. Um, the updated guidance from the Navy has not been received. And I would hate for that to stay under wraps and only be received by multinational companies like Starbucks. Um, that's all. We hope to put that word out. Yeah. Soon. Cool. Okay. Thank Any you. Any other questions? Thank you. Um, David Lewis. Good evening. Um, my name is David Lewis. I live at 47977 Memory Lane in Lexington Park. And <clears throat> I'm here to speak to the issue of including a Starbucks in the proposed plan. It would be a direct threat to the continuing viability of St. Innie's Coffee. And we, we, our <clears throat> owner of St. Innie's has been very gracious, but I'm really concerned. This is a community jewel, and the um, Starbucks does not come close to providing the same sort of community um, service and support that we find through St. Innes. It would be a significant loss to our community if we were to lose it. It's a well-established, locally-owned business. Its profits are recirculated through our local community. It has a, a occupancy in a previously vacant building. Um, and if it were to not be able to survive, it would create another vacancy. Um, <clears throat> it's well recognized in our community for offering employment to handicapped individuals. I don't know that Starbucks has a policy of such uh, community service. It's a center for community activity. Uh, there's a children's area. There's a evening activities that are open. And there are books that flow through there like a community library. 
Starbucks, on the <clears throat> other hand, would be like a monetary vacuum cleaner sucking financial resources out of our community. They go, profits go to Seattle. They don't stay in Lexington Park. We already have Starbucks on the base in Target and <clears throat> uh, near Harris Teeter. The drive through as we've just heard, is going to cause significant traffic problems. And given the criteria that were up on the screen earlier, um, it would be a major safety issue. The Starbucks company or corporation has a reputation for moving into areas and squeezing out local businesses. I don't think we should let this happen here in Lexington Park. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions, Mr. Lewis? Thank you, sir. Was there anybody else? I'm sorry? No, I was just saying thank you, Mr. Lewis, for your comments. Okay. Is there anybody else? Okay. Yes, sir. You can come up. I don't know if I got to swear you in. Did did I? No, you didn't, sir. Okay. Can you raise your right hand, please? And do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Could you give us your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Edward Ald. I'm a resident of St. Mary's County since 1988, and I operate the Dairy Queen on Great Mills Road. Um, I guess the biggest thing is with Lexington Park, has a negative connotation as it stands right now, as far as when the community. After eight o'clock at night, or when the sun goes down, it becomes a ghost town. Now with the plans that are proposed here, more lighting, we all know thing, thing, bad things happen in the, in the dark, okay? Um, we made a conscious decision at our Dairy Queen to keep our lights on 24 hours a day, except, well, when it's sun up, sun down. Our, vice versa. The biggest thing is, is Lexington Park needs help as far as revitalization. Okay, that's to me, I want the shopping center to come in. The more bodies that actually hit Lexington Park, the better it is for everyone's business. Even if they put an ice cream shop in, doesn't bother me. Um, or another fast food restaurant. Um, the way Lexington Park is now, you know, like I said, you can if you go online and you read all the comments on Facebook and all, every time Lexington Park's mentioned, it's in the negative connotation. It just is. It's, it's a fact of life. Um, we need something to boost the area up. I live in Great Mills. Like I said, I've resided here for since 1988, uh, even back when I was partners in the Western Steer years ago. Um, the biggest thing is, with this shopping center, with the Aldi's that comes in, there's a reason they're building a second Aldi's here. Probably because that Aldi's is probably one of the top five Aldi's on the East Coast. They wouldn't build a second one if the other one wasn't doing well. And it's the same thing. Um, I ran demographics on another business we're looking at. The Lowe's Hardware Store in California, Maryland is the number three hardware store in the state of Maryland. The business is here. We have the population to support a center like this. And that's basically all I have to say. You know, as a business person and as a resident, we look forward to having something like that in our community. Okay. Does anybody have any comments from Mr. Holt? Questions? Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else? Okay, I'll close public testimony at this time. I'll open it up for any rebuttal from the applicant, anything that you had. Mr. Longmore, would you like to take care of that? Just briefly, um, Planning Commission members, we've appreciated your time tonight. Uh, we're here with the concept site plan. I know you're familiar with the standards that we need to prove. Um, to highlight those briefly, um, the first is that it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. We think we've demonstrated that. We've talked about that a lot tonight. Um, this is what, you know, in the last speaker, um, I appreciate the comments he made. I feel the same way. 
growing up here in Leonardtown, but living in Lexington Park now, I'm excited to see some of this development come back that when I first moved home in 2000, there was talk of trying to revitalize this area. And here we are 23 years later, um, and it's going to happen, which is just exciting. Um, the second standard is that it may be served by adequate public facilities. Um, I'll draw your attention. This has been highlighted a little bit to the staff report. All of the applicable agencies um, have given favorable recommendations. Um, it's not a review agency that has approval or denial ability, but the comment about the uh, Navy has reviewed this. And the comments about the Navy, I know Mr. Randall had to leave. Um, my client has worked directly with them to work through the concerns that they would have about something um, like this going in there, and they've addressed them in the design that's here. That is some of the redesigns that have occurred uh, before we got here tonight. Um, you know, will it promote the health, safety, and welfare of the general public? I think the last public um, uh, comment that came in really highlights that. This is going to make it a better lit area. It's going to add more landscaping. It's going to make it safer for, for traffic. All of that, we think, will promote uh, the welfare and general public. And uh, Mr. President, you suggested, Mr. Chairman, having a grocery store here in Lexington Park um, is something that I've heard in some of the other projects that I've been here that people want healthy food options in Lexington Park that they can walk to. We're going to have that if this is approved. Um, you know, whether there's adequate amenities um, as provided in the ordinance, again, the landscaping, the sidewalks, all of the pedestrian-friendly uh, discussions that you heard today, including new sidewalks, but also the removal of those awnings and make it darker um, and, and make it feel less safe. Um, and then it being consistent with the Chapter 62 design objectives, um, I think Mr. Paul um, and his presentation showed uh, this is the type of thought and care we want people that come and invest in our community uh, to do, and I think that it meets all of those standards. Um, and I'm just proud to stand with someone that wants to come in, saw an interest in our community, wants to be here, you know, not just come and develop and, and run out, have a mix of current tenants, bring in new ones to revitalize this. Um, I think this is an important project, not just for Lexington Park, but for our entire county, and I think it will be very beneficial to our relationship with the Navy base. Um, it is the gateway to Lexington Park, but it's also right outside uh, the base, and the more we can do to make that um, more attractive, more user-friendly, um, and have more options there to only support that mission, uh, which is so important to all of us and, and all of our businesses that, that we have here in the county. Um, so for that reason, uh, we again, we appreciate your time tonight, and we'd ask that you approve uh, the concept site plan with the conditions recommended by staff and their staff report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Longmore. Yeah, we'll come with Chris, just one thing. There, there's always been, since the beginning of time, a need for food store proximate to where this is going. I mean, the AMP was in Tulagi Place originally. Uh, it then occupied where Big Lots is. Right. right Years remember. before that, the Safeway occupied where um, Starbucks will go. That was a safe way at one time. Right. So there was, it's always meant to have a food store there. It just has not been successful on, you know, and they've moved a bit down the way. So I think the food store, the Aldi will be, I think, an enormous asset um, to this area. So I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to close all testimony now and open it up to the board. Um, it's been a while since we've seen something positive come in Lexington Park that we could talk about. Um, of course, there are business. St. Innings, great coffee shop, have been in there. Uh, totally different atmosphere than a Starbucks. Um, not that I'm a Starbucks person. I think I've been in there once, but it just, it's a, it's a, to me, it's an in and out type of thing. Hurry up, get your thing, and do, do your business. Your business is completely different, so I feel safe, you know, with, with this, knowing that you've got a good clientele that's going to, that they're, they're going to follow. But um, this is going to be so much help to this this little piece of property right here. Just in, in regard to your comments, I don't, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree that things will be different for St. Anise. I mean, I, I don't. Lacking the ability, this board doesn't have the ability we have no specific master plan 
that as specifically says or limits what will or won't be built there. We don't have them. We have a comprehensive plan. We have a Lexington Park Development Master Plan um, that addresses, well, you know what it addresses. We, we talked about it tonight. But it doesn't specifically limit what can or can't be constructed there. In some master plans, for example, they, they may say you can only have two gas stations. So we wouldn't be talking about some places that are having three or four, whatever. But then we don't have the ability to, to say no. I mean, this is a, 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 it's a business decision. Um, people typically don't, you know, he just talked about that. People typically don't, businesses typically don't uh, come in and open businesses without doing their due diligence. If the market, they didn't believe the market was feasible here, they wouldn't be here. Um, and that said, we have had oppor opportunities, and I mentioned the town center that came forward years ago. Extremely well done, extremely, uh, and it was, it was really, really, I felt very comfortable about having it move forward, but the economy just didn't let him do that. And so it's still there, it's, it's for sale, um, but it's a business decision. And we don't have the ability to say, this, this planning commission just doesn't have the ability to say no. We don't. Um, so, oh, thank we, you for your we, comment. We, we can't have we, we. We've closed all public testimony now. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as I'd like to let you come up, we have closed public testimony. Sorry, <laughs> and I'm just saying that. And I think that the product that St. Anne's has and the product that that Starbucks has is different. And I will and I will say that. Even in the times where, in my businesses, I found a way to coexist. Um, an example, I had a Montgomery Ward sales agency. Sears agency was across the street. How did, you know, so we had to figure out a way. So what we did, we contracted to do all of Sears deliveries. <laughs> so it was a way of mitigating the, you know, the, the competition situation. And I don't know how you would do that at St. Um, but I, I wish you all well. I showed up in 1951 okay. and I really tried to do that. <laughs> okay. Any any other deliberations from the board? Let me make a comment. Let me make a quick comment to the board. Please if, do. If there's a motion, I think we're missing one of the conditions. There's three outstanding issues and only two of them listed in the conditions. Because the other one is the road improvements. I think we would need to add whoever makes the motion, if there's a motion, I think they would need to also add that another variance from the Board of Appeals is required. There's only one of them on there for the Type B buffer yard. The one for the reduction of the landscape is not listed in the conditions. Just a technical matter that probably okay. should be included in a motion, I think. And I have a question for Donnie Mills. I we're, see him in, not getting away. Up. Oh. We're, we're all been done. We're, we're kind of late. Well, you can sit there, actually. Listen. We're actually kind of late for question and answers now. Well, we, I understand. But this is just a, uh, do we know, um, on the back side of this property, do we know how uh, uh, FDR is going to be affected? Well, FDR is not going to be affected by this because it is what it is. How will FDR... Will they expand? Will they buy easements? What will they do on the back side of this? I think I think we've already closed this out. I'm asking a question. Can I can I just take this opportunity to do you take back to your boss and thank him for doing the sidewalks, please, on uh, on Buck Hewitt Road? I, uh, I I beat up on all him all the time about them not being there, and just so I'm appreciative of the fact that the sidewalks are being constructed. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Good to see you, Mr. Mills. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Tell Mr. Gotch to let you out a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Is there any other deliberations? We have um, heard from Mr. Van Kirk about the uh, extra condition. If this is, if we make a motion to approve this, that would need to be included. I think should be included. So. What's the exact wording? Just what it says in the outstanding conditions. 
it's written up up top in the outstanding. Just add that as a, as the n number D, letter D. Letter D, okay. As that one. Okay. Well, if there's no more discussion, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make it if you want me to. Okay. I'll make it. Go ahead. In the matter of concept site plan number CSP 23-0152, Pax River Village Center, having accepted staff report and having made a finding that the objectives of section 60.6 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met and noting that the reference project has met all requirements for concept approval, I move that the concept site plan be approved with the following conditions. A, any road improvements required by the state and county must be concurrent with the issuance of certi certificate of occupancy. B, a variance must be obtained to reduce or remove the requirements for the B-type buffer yard by the Zoning Board of Appeals. C, a text amendment must be approved to permit use number 74, restaurant, fast food, and the LCI zoning district and the APZ2 overlay. D, landscaping requirements. Is that the one you needed? Yes. Yes. Landscaping requirement is 20% of site area, 4.95 acres. Landscaping provided is 4.39 acres or 17.7%. A variance is required. I think that covers all of them. All right, just wanted to write that down. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Is there any discussion on, I have a motion from Ms. Robrecht, second from Mr. Brown. Um, is there any, does anybody want to speak? Okay, I'll do it in roll call. What happened to be first this week, Ms. Robrecht? Aye. Ms. Summers? Aye. Mr. Brown? Aye. Mr. Evans? Mr. Fazekas? Aye. Mr. Van Kirk? Aye. And it is unanimous. Um, take care of your neighbors over there. We've got a lot going on, but y'all got a good project. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have anything else on our agenda this evening. If we have nothing else, so I'll accept the motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. I have a motion from Ms. Robrecht. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Summers. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Thank you. We're adjourned.